salaga eh mi edo sala mi bo agbo awo o mi edo salaga eh mi edo salaga I'm from Ghana. I was born and raised in Ghana until about 10, 11 years old. Then I came here. But I came with my family to New Jersey and um, I lived in America since. I started off with um, graphic design and my mom did not approve. <laughs> so I had to stop and go to nursing. And so I was a nurse for a couple of years. And then I rebelled against it because that's not what I wanted to do. Life here in New York is pretty stressful. You're always worrying about money, how to get this done, how to get that done, finding this door of opportunity and opening it yourself or finding it being open. It's, it's stressful in New York, but there are a lot of opportunities. There are some things here that I've come to actually appreciate that I'm unable to get in Ghana, which is that quick, you know, I need to get it now kind of thing. Ghana, everything is moving in slow motion. I mean, literally everything. Is it good for business? Not really. But is it good for life? Yeah, you take life easier. So when I'm there, I know how to adjust to be more Ghanaian. And when I'm here, I know how to adjust to make New York work for me. Oh, being black in New York, the one thing I do worry about is my life, my safety. Uh, it seems like being black in America, period, is scary. It's a problem. My friends from London usually laugh at us from the US like, hey man, are you sure you want to go back there? Because it seems like, you know, you guys are getting taken down little by little. And I'm almost at the point of believing it's some kind of ethnic cleansing. Um, so yeah, being black in New York is hard. We shouldn't be looking at color. It's like the least important thing in the world. Because if I cut you, you bleed. If you cut me, I bleed. Same way. I was in Ghana for like a year and two or three months. I was only supposed to be there for three months. Anyway, I got there and uh, I decided to finish the album there. And there was a particular sound that I was looking for, which would be the electro trap and our local sound, which is called Agbaja. I wanted a blend of that and I couldn't find it anywhere except Ghana. My genre of music is, I like to call it voodoo music or spirit music. It's kind of like gospel music, but then voodoo music. <laughs> Submit to me, tell me your evil deeds. Taste my kiss of death. I blow the dragon's breath on your face. I go. As an artist, you don't just write songs because you think you're freaking smart and you're a good songwriter. No, there's always some kind of spiritual urge, something that sparks that inspiration, that drives you to go and write that song. Whether it's someone breaking up with you or fighting or someone suffering, something. Something inspires every artist. Yeah, the inspiration comes from getting closer to my tradition, I guess. Uh, becoming or accepting more of my tradition that was initially painted to me as something bad. So I guess just accepting my culture fully and seeing the beauty, the immense beauty of it. It's like a vast well of just, God, spiritual connection to different things and people, I guess. Voodoo is what is how we say it in Ewe from Ghana. It's voodoo which really means free the people. And I feel like it's the one thing that would free black or it would free mankind. 
of all of these attachments, unnecessary attachments. So voodoo is actually a very beautiful thing. People are just afraid of it because they don't understand. I feel more at home spiritually, physically, with traditional voodoo system or the traditional voodoo way of life. I'm much more comfortable with that.